Logan Paul just got sued in a class action lawsuit for his crypto sue project. And in this video, I'm going to break down the complaint to see exactly what it's saying and then also give my opinion on a couple of things. Again, as a reminder, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. And at the end, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. All right, so I just pulled up the complaint here. Uh, as you can see, I crossed out the plaintiff's name because even though it's probably out there, I'm really not trying to get in trouble as this person is probably a private individual. First thing to note here is the names of the defendants. Uh, obviously, Logan Paul is there as well as others that are co-founders of this project, including Eduardo Ibanez, which I believe was the head developer that was supposed to actually make the game. I guess we can start off with a little bit about the background of this project. I'm not really going to go into details of it. I'll leave a link uh, below and up top here to show you uh, a video where CopyZella breaks down exactly what the game was supposed to be. But essentially, it was supposed to be a game where you bought these crypto zoo coins um, that would then purchase these eggs that would be NFTs that you can just hatch them into these animals, uh, which then you can breed together and then hatch more um, rare crypto zoo animals and eventually make money out of it. It was supposed to be a game that also paid you money. At least that's how they were advertising it. As we'll see later in the complaint, uh, the game never actually came to be. First thing to note here is that they tried to categorize this as a rug pull um, and which I would think it probably is a, a rug pull. Um, they focus here on the developers abruptly abandoning the, the project, which technically is true, as we'll see in the terms of service. I think they had the deadline for like September of 2021. However, the complaint did acknowledge the fact that supposedly Logan Paul has promised to now uh, try to finish and deliver the game, as well as make up uh, the losses to some people about uh, by burning his coins and Mr. Levin's coins, as, as well as making this rewards program. But he did uh, emphasize that it's only going to be uh, customers that haven't sold their NFTs or coins yet. They're excluding anybody who has already sold their NFTs uh, from this program. As you can see, there's a screenshot here about him exactly saying that. Then the complaint focuses a little bit about whether or not uh, Logan Paul is trying to frame this as an investment. The terms of service actually says that it's not, that it's not considered an investment vehicle. Although there are a couple of Discord uh, comments here or messages left by Logan where it kind of alludes that he's trying to get at uh, as them being as... Um, investments seems like for the purposes of this complaint they try not to focus on the fact that it's an investment and instead try to focus on the fact that it was a product slash service that was just never delivered then they also mentioned this last comment here where logan basically saying that he's no he no longer wants to be everybody's scapegoat with their financial dis decisions again kind of alluding to the fact that this might be an investment vehicle it really is not uh, looking good for Logan Paul while he's making these types of comments. The next thing I thought was really important to mention was the fact that the lawyers here are really trying to break the corporate uh, veils. Corporate veil is essentially some sort of protection like uh, eliminate liability uh, for certain companies where uh, if something does happen, the company takes the fall instead of the individuals. Uh, and they're basically trying to break that to have not just Logan, but these co-founders be individually liable instead of just faulting the company, have them file for bankruptcy, and then, you know, completely having their slate um, clean after that. There's a couple of requirements that the lawyers have to meet in order to get that uh, breaking of the corporate veil, because believe it or not, courts in this country try to give a de facto um, judgment to the businesses, believing that uh, most of their uh, business decisions tend to be justified. Uh, it's just very pro-company. Uh, and then by breaking that corporate veil, uh, it, it helps have the individuals actually be liable themselves. So uh, I just thought this was kind of funny to mention, but like not really how the plaintiff got involved in uh, CryptoZoo. He actually got involved because his child told him to and told him about this project. Now, I would never take financial decision from my kid, uh, but it seems like this parent did. Um, you know, not to judge. I just thought that was kind of funny uh, in a very unfunny situation. Um, when he heard about this project being backed by a massive team and like a million dollars being invested, he himself put in a thousand dollars, which went down unfortunately because of everything that was going on but afterwards when there was more positive positive developments about what was going on on uh, these stories coming out from logan and his team he ev eventually added an extra two thousand dollars so in total he invested three thousand 
He invested $3,000. Ended up losing the majority of his investments of the $3,000. So now we're getting into a little bit of the factual allegations of like what is happening or what occurred um, to lead to this lawsuit. They specifically mentioned Eddie and Jake as those that actually sold their large amounts of digital products right after the release and made large profits. Now they allude that it's possible that other defendants did, which it is, but they just mentioned these two because it seems like they were able to verify that with the blockchain and, and connect it to the wallets. So the next thing I want to mention is about this class action lawsuit and how it came to being. Um, to file for a class action lawsuit, it's not just that simple. You actually have to meet certain requirements and I'm going to briefly talk about those requirements. And essentially to be able to be considered as a class action lawsuit, you have to meet the numerosity um, requirement, the commonality requirement, the um, typical typicality requirement and adequacy uh, requirement. So let's go through them really quickly. Uh, the numerosity, essentially what the court is trying to get at is that it's just impractical for multiple of these defendants to go and file their individual cases. Now there really isn't a specific number that has to exist, but here there's 20,000 victims. I'm pretty sure that is enough to qualify as uh, being so numerous that it would just be impractical to impractical to have all these people just go to the court and file their own complaints. The next thing would be commonality. This is essentially if the facts and uh, things about the law are very similar and common between the victims. Um, so if the facts and the um, questions about the law and the lawsuits and the allegations are very common they don't have to be the same but at least common enough that they all stem from like the same thing um that would mostly likely be able to satisfy the commonality requirement here they mentioned a couple of things the fact that you know the product and service was never fulfilled and was never actually given that they violated their agreement to actually be able to deliver this product that they were all defrauded uh these are the type of um facts that they all point out, that the, the plaintiff points out to basically argue that there is a, cam, a commonality here between all victims. Going to the typicality, this is uh, similar to the commonality, but this one mostly focuses on the main plaintiff themselves. They wanna make sure that the plaintiff themselves has enough in common with the claims and also the facts that they are able to uh, then be able to represent all these people which kind of sounds a lot like adequacy, but adequacy focuses a lot more on that there's no conflict of interest between the plaintiff and the rest of the victims and to make sure that they can actually represent the interest of everybody. Okay, so now we move on to the cause of action. The cause of action are fraud, express breach of contract, implied breach of contract, unjust enrichment, violation of Texas Deceptive Trade Practices Act, negligence, fraudulent misrepresentation, and conspiracy to commit fraud. Now, all of these have very similar facts that go towards each of these causes of, of action. Uh, to basically summarize, they're trying to argue that this product slash service was promoted and yet it did not exist and it was never fulfilled, that they represented CryptoSue would be functional and they made false representations about it, that they also manipulated the market regarding the Zoo tokens and the NFTs and that they willfully failed to support this community. These are the facts that they mention to basically argue why these cause of actions are being listed. So what are my takeaways from this? It seems like this complaint is really trying to focus on the fact that this CryptoZoo project was actually a product slash service, considering that it was supposed to be a game. Instead of it being considered an investment, I know it mentions a couple of facts where Logan himself may have alluded to it being an investment, but it doesn't really focus on it being a securities or an investment because if not, they would have mostly focused on like securities fraud and they don't mention anything about the Securities Exchange Act or anything like that. And they probably think that that is best suited for the SEC uh, in case they want to file something against Logan. Plus, they probably also didn't want to go down the investment route because it isn't really that clear. You would have to go through the Howey test to essentially find out if it would be considered an investment contract. And for your own quick reference, in order for it to be an investment contract, um, a person needs to have invested money, it just needs some sort of value. There has to be a common enterprise. This mostly focuses on the fact that there's a group of people uh, that are together investing or putting money into something. There's a couple of different tests like the vertical versus the, the horizontal commonality. Most courts focus on the horizontal commonality, but there are different tests depending on the jurisdiction. Then the third requirement is expecting profits. 
this is the element that is probably more up in the air and debatable uh, because it seems like the contract and the terms of service that Logan provided to everybody makes it seem like it was more of a game and a product instead of an investment vehicle. I mean, they specifically mentioned that it's not an investment vehicle. However, just because it's stated that way doesn't necessarily mean that it's not. Just by other facts and by other actions being taken by people, it could be considered an investment. But again, this is more of a question for the SEC. And the fourth element focuses on whether or not the gains and profits of this quote unquote investment came from the efforts of others. This could be either through promoters or the fact that, I don't know, a video game has to be developed and they're the ones that are developing it. Um, so yeah, it seems like this element is most likely um, easy to determine that there is. But like I said, the third element is probably where it's going to be the hardest to argue. Um, it can go either way. I personally think it is uh, expecting profits because especially last year, I don't think many people actually bought NFTs for the art. They mostly focus it with the expectation of it going uh, up in value and then selling it for a profit. But again, that's probably a question that the SEC should answer instead of me. What I'm gonna find very interesting is how this case develops because once this case is done, if the court ends up deciding that this was just a product slash service, I don't know how that's gonna affect any potential lawsuit slash criminal charges that the SEC might bring against Logan since they focus on securities frauds. That's gonna be super interesting to just like wait and see and, and see what happens. But again, if you like this video, give a thumbs up, um, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time.